Hello and welcome to our English channel. In this video we will be sharing story to help you improve your English skills. Listening and repeating this story will help you build your vocabulary and improve your pronunciation and boost your confidence and remember, repetition is key. So be sure to watch this video multiple times and practice saying the phrases out loud. Let's get started. Story number one. Friends forever. There once lived a mouse and frog who were very good friends. Every morning the frog would go to visit the mouse who lived in a hole inside a tree. The mouse very much enjoyed the company of the frog, but the mouse did not realize that the frog was growing increasingly frustrated because it was always him who had to visit the mouse and never the other way around. The lazy little mouse did not know it at the time but he was slowly making an enemy of his good friend, the frog, one afternoon, when it was time to return home. The frog decided that he had had enough of this one-sided friendship. And so the frog tied one end of a piece of string to his leg, and then tied the other end of the piece of string to the little mouse's tail without him noticing. The frog waved goodbye to the mouse and then dived into the pond at the foot of the tree far below. All at once, completely to his surprise, the string pulled tight on the mouse's tail and he was dragged from the safety of his tree and sent tumbling into the air towards the pond below. Splash! The poor little mouse could not swim, and as much as he struggled and struggled to free his tail, he could not untie the piece of string. After much splashing and struggling, the poor mouse finally drowned in the pond. That will teach you to make a fool out of me, you lazy mouse, thought the frog. But this misdeed did not go unnoticed. High up in the sky, a hawk spotted the little mouse floating in the water below. And so the hungry hawk swooped down towards the pond to grab the little mouse for its dinner. It was only when the hawk grasped a hold of the mouse with its sharp talons that the frog remembered he was still tied to the mouse by the piece of string. Up, up into the sky went the frog, until the hawk came to rest in the tallest branch of a nearby tree. It was then that the frog realized the error of his ways. In setting a trap for his friend, the frog had also set a trap for himself and sealed his own fate and now he too would be eaten by the hawk because of his wicked plan. There is an old African proverb that goes, Do not dig too deep a pit for your enemy because you may fall into it yourself. Story number two. Goldilocks and the Three Bears, once upon a time, in a little house on the edge of the woods, a girl called Goldilocks lived with her parents. One morning, she woke up as the sun was streaming through her window, thinking it was time for school. She leapt out of bed, downstairs her mother was busy. It's far too early for school. Don't get under my feet. Why don't you go out for a walk? You can pick me some blackberries to make a pie for dinner tonight, she grumbled. Goldilocks went skipping into the woods swinging a basket for the blackberries. Singing to herself, she went further and further into the woods. After a while, she began to feel hungry and a little tired. Across a clearing in the woods she suddenly saw a cottage. Perhaps I could get something to eat there and have a rest, she thought. She knocked on the door, but there was no reply. Gently, she pushed the door and, to her surprise, it opened. Cautiously, she went in, hello? She called, but no one answered. The door had opened into a kitchen. On the table she could see three bowls of porridge, which smelled so delicious that it made her tummy rumble. The bowls were three different sizes, big, middle-sized, and tiny. And by each bowl was a chair also big, middle-sized, and tiny. Goldilocks scrambled onto the biggest chair because it had the biggest bowl of porridge by it. She picked up a big spoon and tried the porridge, ouch. She cried. This porridge is too hot. She moved on to the next chair and the next bowl. 
Picking up a middle-sized spoon, she tried the porridge, yuck. She said, for it was very, very cold, Goldilocks moved on to the next chair and the smallest bowl. Picking up the smallest spoon, she tried the porridge. It was just right. So, very quickly, she ate it all up. As she was finishing it, she began to hear a strange creaking sound and, just as she ate the last spoonful, the legs of the chair she was sitting on broke and she landed with a bump on the floor. After all the porridge and the bump, she suddenly felt very sleepy. So she went up the twisty stairs to see if she could find somewhere to lie down. First of all, she found a great big bed. She climbed up onto it but, oh, it was too hard. Then she found a middle-sized bed. She climbed into it but it was too soft. She felt as though she would disappear in it. Then she found a teeny tiny bed. This felt just right so she climbed into it pulled the covers over herself and was soon fast asleep. While she was sleeping, the owners of the cottage came back. They were three bears, Daddy Bear, Mummy Bear, and Baby Bear. They'd been for a walk in the woods before breakfast and now they were hungry. Hello, what's this? Growled Daddy Bear in his great big voice. It looks as though someone's been messing with my porridge and whoever it is has left muddy footprints on my chair. Mummy Bear came to look. You're right, my dear, she said in her soft, growly, middle-sized voice. Someone's been eating my porridge too and I'm sure the cushion on my chair has been sat on. Then Baby Bear began to cry. Someone's been eating my porridge and they've eaten it all up and they've broken my chair as well. He sobbed in his little, squeaky, teeny, middle-sized growl, who could have done this? And where were they now? They wondered, they looked around the house and went upstairs. Well, growled Daddy Bear, someone's been lying in my bed, but they're not there now. Someone's been in my bed too, said Mummy Bear, but I can't see them. Then they heard a squeak from Baby Bear, Daddy. Mummy, come quickly, there's someone fast asleep in my bed. Daddy and Mummy Bear raced into his room and stood around the bed looking down at Goldilocks. She woke with a start and was frightened to see three bears all looking at her. Before they could say anything, she jumped out of bed, out of the window, and ran away through the woods back to her home because she didn't know that they were really gentle friendly bears. Well, I never, growled Daddy Bear, scratching his head. My grandfather told me people were strange. Fancy, eating all that porridge and then running away. Puzzled, the three bears went back to the kitchen where Daddy Bear mended Baby Bear's chair, while Mummy Bear made more porridge. And from that day to this, Bears all over the world have always known that people are strange creatures who are not to be trusted with porridge. Story number one. Eight royal trees. There was once a powerful king who was married to seven queens. The king was a good ruler and a generous man, but he had no heir to his throne and this made him very sad. One day, the youngest and most beautiful of the king's wives became pregnant. The king was overjoyed at this news and there was much celebrating. The older wives became more and more jealous of the young queen as their husband, the king, began to pay her more and more attention and bestow upon her lavish gifts and affection. When the day finally arrived, the youngest queen did not give birth to just one child, but instead gave birth to eight beautiful babies, seven handsome boys and one beautiful girl. The jealous queens, unable to have children of their own, hatched an unspeakable plan when they learned of the birth of the eight children. During the night, before the poor king had a chance to see his sons and his daughter, the queens stole each child, killed them and buried them in the palace gardens where they would never be found. Then the jealous queens replaced each boy with a puppy dog, and the baby girl they replaced with a small kitten. 
Then they called for the king to come quickly to the youngest queen's chambers. You see she has given birth to animals, said the first wife. This is surely witchcraft, said another. You must banish your youngest wife from our kingdom. Although the youngest queen protested her innocence to the king, she was still banished from the kingdom and forced to live in exile, never knowing what had happened to her beloved children. The years passed until, one warm spring, something very strange happened. From the earth where the wicked queens had buried the eight children, there grew seven kampa trees and one parul tree, beautiful and colorful and rich in aroma. When the wicked queens approached the trees and tried to pluck the beautiful flowers, the branches lifted higher into the air out of reach. When the king approached and tried to pluck the flowers, the branches moved again so that the flowers remained on the tree, then a soft voice drifted on the scented breeze. Bring the banished queen to us and see if she can pluck our flowers. The king ordered his most trusted guards to fetch the banished queen and return her to the palace. Upon her return, the young queen was asked by the king to approach the mysterious trees and try to pluck the flowers from the branches. When she reached up and plucked a flower from the first compa tree, a baby boy emerged from the flower and was reunited with his mother. The same thing happened with the second compa tree and the third, until all seven baby boys were reunited with their mother. And when the queen reached up and plucked the flower from the parul tree, a beautiful baby girl emerged from the flower and embraced her mother once more. The king was overjoyed to see his family reunited at last and asked his wife to forgive him and to return to the palace forever. The king also learned that the older queens had been responsible for the evil plot to separate him from his youngest wife and his eight children. He immediately ordered that each wife be imprisoned for life and never spoken of again. After the evil queens were imprisoned, the youngest queen and the king lived happily ever after with their eight beautiful children who all grew up to be strong and healthy. This story quickly spread throughout the kingdom and the people learned that no good can ever come of envy or of wrongdoing. Story number two. Friends find a way in a dark, dense forest in New Zealand, there lived a little grub called Aaron. He was white and small and moved by wiggling his body. Best of all, he shared a twig with his best friend Chris. Chris was also a grub. In some ways, they were different. Chris ate a lot of leaves. Aaron didn't really like leaves. He didn't like sleeping at night either. But that's when Chris slept so Aaron did the same. Best friends do everything together. During the day they played their favorite game, racing to the end of a twig, laughing all the way. One morning, Chris started behaving differently. I feel a little stiff today. He yawned. Aaron tried to tempt Chris up the twig with his favorite leaf, but Chris said he was tired. The afternoon became dark. Heavy raindrops began to fall. Soon the whole forest sounded like it was whispering in the rain. Chris, did you see that? I saw lightning, said Aaron. He turned to his friend, but something was wrong. Chris's skin had turned hard like a shell. Aaron poked him, but he didn't move. Chris, he cried. Aaron heard a sleepy snore from deep within the shell. Even the crashing thunder didn't stir his friend. Aaron's heart raced, but he tried to be brave. Chris, you are my best friend, he cried. I am going to stand by you until you become well again. Aaron didn't move all night. In the morning, he brought Chris his favorite leaf, but still he slept. Without Chris to follow, Aaron started to eat little bugs instead of leaves. To his surprise, he found them quite tasty. Soon, Aaron grew very strong. He started staying up later too. On a clear night, he could see the Southern Cross. He loved it, although he missed his friend. Seven nights later, Aaron saw something strange. Two trees away, a little light winked at him like a star. Soon there was another and another. 
He peered a little harder and froze. Was that a voice? He stayed very still. The next morning, Aaron woke up with a start. The shell was moving. It creaked and cracked. Before long, something very different sat in its place. Chris. You're a butterfly, cried Aaron. Chris giggled. I need to stretch my wings. And with that, he fluttered away. Aaron watched his friend go, and a funny feeling grew in his tummy. He couldn't follow. All he could do was race to the top of the twig. Would Chris ever want to race to the top of the twig again? The funny feeling stretched into his throat and he began to cry. He cried and cried until it was dark and he had no more tears. Are you okay? Called a voice in the darkness. Aaron stopped. The little lights were back. He swallowed and stood very still. He didn't want to be seen. Suddenly, he felt a poke on his back and he jumped, Aaron, it's mean, Aaron relaxed. It was his friend. Chris, I'm so glad to see you. How did you find me in the dark? I heard a voice out there and I've been keeping still to hide, Chris smiled. Aaron, don't you know? You're glowing. I saw you from the edge of the forest. You're a glow worm, Aaron's eyes widened. That's right, said Chris. And there are more glow worms in that tree over there. They've been trying to call to you. They want to be friends, Aaron laughed, but then he remembered why he was sad. Chris, if you're a butterfly and I'm a glow worm, can we still be friends? Butterflies have wings and glow worms have threads. You wake up at dawn and I wake up at dusk. How will it work? Of course we can, silly, said Chris. We will always be friends. Friends find a way. From that day on, at every dawn and every dusk, Chris and Aaron raced to the top of their twig, laughing all the way. Listen to the lessons repeatedly to think in English and automatically speaking. Repetition is very, very important to become fluent. You need to speak English fluently without translating in your head. The words and sentences should come out of your mouth automatically. So this is the where repetition comes in. If you repeat the same vocabulary and sentences many times, you will become a master of this vocabulary and grammar. So you will be able to use those words automatically without thinking about grammar rules and without translating vocabulary in your head. In order to think in English, you must repeat vocabulary and sentences as much as you can. After lots of repetition, eventually you will start to think in English in your head and improve your speaking English.